You know, we all hear a lot about um, the word brand, and um, it's so often confused because um, in many cases people think a brand is a, a name and a logo. That's just the tip of the iceberg, actually. That's actually the least important part of the brand. The most important part of the brand, and we create many brands here at MSEO, is the brand promise. In other words, what does the product or service company, etc., promise that it will do? How will it will make your life better? How will it make your company, your business better? That's the brand promise, and that's the key element to a successful business, and that is to stand, to declare a sharply defined brand promise and to stand behind it. I mean, we all know that Apple's brand, for example, is not an apple, it's not a fruit. It's, you know, cutting edge um, entertainment, cool design technology that we have fun with and that has some pragmatic value. And if they stopped delivering on that, um, it wouldn't be that the logo was changed, it would be that the promise was no longer there and we would lose interest in the company. And uh, actually something that interests me, I've been thinking about it a lot, and that is we see brands, we always see brands rise and fall, rise and fall, because they're not nurtured, because companies forget about the promise behind the brand for, for many different reasons. But one thing that's really intriguing me is the President of the United States, who actually got elected on a brand, the Obama brand. And it happens with almost all politicians who are successful, they establish a brand and, and run really on the brand. There's some exceptions, but that's generally the case. Whatever you think about Obama, I mean, he had the most powerful brand in the world roughly two years ago. And a brand that he could do anything with. It was a brand that swept him into the White House. It was a brand that captured the imagination of billions of people, not just Americans, of billions of people around the world. It made him the most famous and probably the most beloved person in the world at the time. You rarely see cases like that. We saw it in, uh, in a Mandela. We saw it in uh, Muhammad Ali. You see it in um, a Paul McCartney. But it's, it, it's very rare. Uh, but the intriguing thing about the Obama brand is I've, like no other brand, it's had an unbelievable rise and the most dramatic fall in the history of all brands. No brand has ever had an arc like the Obama brand that rose so rapidly to such prominence and such promise and so quickly has fallen to the point that when he was getting sworn in as President of the United States, the last thing he would ever think was that this brand called Glenn Beck, whatever you think of him politically, would challenge his brand and maybe be superior to his right now in this moment of time. That could be fluid and change as well. Anyway. The whole issue of brands is not a political statement. It's the whole issue of brands is really interesting, particularly when played out against the backdrop of major national world geopolitical events in the election of an American president and that person's performance as president, what happens to the brand. And I don't think there's ever been a, grand, a brand story as great as the rise and fall of the Obama brand. It, it may not be, the, the final chapter may not be written yet, but it's amazing. I'm going to be on, actually, Fox uh, Business Channel tomorrow on uh, Varney and Company around 10.30 Eastern Time. Um, you may want to uh, listen to me talk about that and other marketing related issues. And uh, you can uh, uh, post your um, comments to the show I'd love you to on the Facebook page uh, listed below. Um, hope you're watching. I think it's a very interesting subject.